Good afternoon. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Gareth Bailey, British ambassador to Egypt. And there are other previous ambassadors on the podium and around this room, so you'll meet them all shortly. Minister Nabila, members of parliament, Ms. Farida Khamis, chair of the board of trustees, honorable members of the board of trustees gathered here today, faculty of staff and students, vice chancellor Latham, ambassadors, members of the diplomatic corps, ladies and gentlemen, Professor Mohammed Dutfi, about to be president of this university, and friends, it is my honor to join what is one of the most extraordinary events of this year. But let me take you somewhere else, and then we will arrive at Mohammed in a few minutes' time. Diplomacy, let's start there. Diplomacy gets a very bad rap, ladies and gentlemen, by which I mean that diplomacy often has a bad reputation. It is often seen as taking care of business, sorting things out, more like the godfather or the sopranos than the noble calling of international relations. Sir Henry Wotton, English ambassador, for it was England in those days, to Venice in the 17th century, said an ambassador is an honest man sent to lie abroad for the good of his country. And for those of you who would like to come a little bit closer to home and in education, many of you will be familiar with the film Morgan Ahmed Morgan. <laughs> Adel Imam, obviously close to all of our hearts, was a gentleman who in his role as Morgan Ahmed Morgan decided he could buy his education and he could fill a gap in his heart and in his soul through the acquisition of contacts and through Rashawa and Shay Bil Yasmin. <laughs> and so, as a diplomat and as an educator, if I may say, both of us need to think a little bit harder about describing the positives of our callings. But there are rare times, however, ladies and gentlemen, when good things happen. The good of two countries comes together. When things are not as bad as all that. When connection is the first thing we all think about. And returning here again after 20 years, Dunya, I feel a proud, proud sense of being a servant of that connection. The Prime Minister and His Excellency President Sisi talk about a strategic partnership, taking things to a whole new level. And above all, this is a year coming where Egypt will be at the center of everybody's attention as the president of the climate conference, COP27, in Sharm el-Sheikh in less than a year's time. And we've just had our summit in Glasgow, my hometown, and also Magdi Ishaq's hometown, more or less, in COP26. So together we have a real connection. We have a partnership. We have something truly good that we can do together. No lies, no deceit, no difficulty, just win-win. And only a few weeks ago, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales was here to celebrate that connection and to celebrate the role of Egypt as a champion of the environment and against climate change. And the role of faiths, and here we have the home of really the most important faiths in protecting environment and protecting climate. And if all these good things should ever hesitate and falter and be less than they should be, I can always turn to my good friend Mohammed Salah because, as you know, he is also royalty. He is Al-Malik al-Masri, the Egyptian king. And this gentleman is who I also call the other ambassador because he does my job when I'm not doing my job. So we have a connection there as well through sport and through honesty, through integrity, through leadership. That's Mohammed Salah, not me. What is all this talk of connection, Kalimat Yani, to do with what we're here to do today? The inauguration 
of the fifth president, Professor Mohammed Lutfi. Only this. The connection, friends, is nothing if it is connection of the ignorant, the unenlightened, the uninspired, or bullies, people who would oppress and not free. Connection is everything when it is the connection of the educated. Connection between the UK and Egypt is particularly strong when you think about our direct links. Every day that I'm here in Egypt, I meet somebody who says, aha, I was educated in, insert name of British University, or my son, my daughter, my grandson, my granddaughter, my niece, my nephew, my uncle, my aunt, we all have British educations to be proud of. So we have something which we can cherish, and we can put it through a British-Egyptian lens. And President Sisi has made abundantly clear to Prime Minister Johnson, and indeed to His Royal Highness, his desire to see this educational link go ever, ever deeper and ever, ever higher. Because education gives connection, its energy, its creativity, its ambition, and its courage. And Professor Lutfi himself has said that university is where you are encouraged to doubt, to imagine, to assimilate, to explore the unknown, and have a culture, dare we say it, of dissent. And this university has written large its motto that it is here that we do how to think, not what to think. And while there is a necessary time for reflection and introspection, that time cannot be always and forever. Connection demands an outward frame of mind. In both the UK and Egypt, my friends, we see this. Rania Mashat, Her Excellency the Minister of International Cooperation, only a few days ago said to me, Egypt is at an end of this era of introspection. That is not we are, what we are about. We are about looking forward and outward. And as Ms. Farida said when she announced the appointment of Mohammed Lutfi, she said that we welcome and are honored to see him appointed at a time of rapid expansion and a transformation program to enhance the university's position as a leading university in the region. And I could say, surely, that is exactly what Egypt says about itself today. Expansion, transformation, enhancing of a leadership position. And my own foreign secretary this very week has only just called on friends and allies around the world to step away from introspection and isolationism, to influence and inspire others, and build new partnerships. This, then, is the connection that we seek, global, inspiring, future-proof, and of integrity. It's that kind of connection. For those of you who finished the whole of the film of Mr. Morgan, Morgan, Ahmed Morgan, the end of the movie, he is reconciled. He sees that it's not about buying your way to something or influencing your way to something. It's about your integrity. It's about your education. It is about looking within and then turning out and connecting to friends. So finally, let me turn to Professor Mohammed Lutfi, about to be President Mohammed Lutfi. As I do that, however, I turn to a favorite theme, our predecessors. Isaac Newton said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. For myself, I will never ask whether I stand on the shoulders of luminaries such as Sir Derek Plumley, here with us today, or my own predecessor, Sir Geoffrey Adams. I will leave them to be the judge for a quiet moment outside this room. But what I will say, and we all know it, is that Professor Mohammed Lutfi stands upon the shoulders of giants. We have here today Professor Mohammed al fai right there. We have Mustafa Ida. Mustafa al fai Shuf the ba'a, hasal and Professor Hamza as well. And it's a board of giants, including right here today, of course, Magdi Aoub, who needs no introduction, Secretary General Amr Musa, and so many of British and Egyptian luminaries who make this board how effective it is today. And so, let me only add to what has already been said on these slides 
that we have with us the next generation in a leader who is Professor Muhammad Lutfi. He is everything you want to see in a leader and a president. He happens to be an Alexandrian, which I think is a good thing. He's also an innovator and a profound thinker. He is a committed internationalist, so international in his mind that he has even been a professor of internationalization, a man who has traveled the length and breadth of the world from Norway to the United Kingdom, from Italy to China. So I would suggest to you, friends, that this university has in Mohammed what it needs. There is no better candidate to lead this university forward as the fifth president. And if you do not want to take my word for it, then let me give you the words of somebody who could not have been here today, I wished he could have been here today. He was here a few weeks ago. And that is His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. And he has written a letter, which I have here, for Professor Mohammed Lutfi and Ms. Farida and the university in my hand. I will give it to them in a moment. But let me read it here now from a copy. Ladies and gentlemen, I was absolutely delighted to hear of the appointment of Dr. Mohammed Lutfi as president of the British University in Egypt. While I'm so sorry not to be there in person, I did just want to send my warmest congratulations on the occasion of his inauguration today. I attended the opening of this university in 2006 under your first president, Dr. Mustafa al fayi and congratulated the board of trustees on the occasion of their celebrating the 10th anniversary of the university. And now on the 15th anniversary of the founding of this fine university, and as the new president is inaugurated, I want to convey my very best wishes for continuing success to Dr. Lutfi, the board of trustees, the faculty and the staff of the university, together with all good fortune to the students of the British University in Egypt, past, present, and to come. Signed, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales. Thank you. So, kifaya kada mani, finas tani na isit kalam. But let me just say this, Mohammed, congratulations. It's extraordinary what you have achieved, and I know what you will achieve. And behind every man and woman, there is a very surprised wife and husband. So may I also say to Heba and to Nail, her son. Congratulations. I look forward to your adventure going ahead. It's going to be amazing. I commit from my side to being a partner, a friend, not a liar, not a corrupt guy. Not going to be Morgan, Ahmed Morgan, a Safir Britani Ahsan Kida. And we will together serve an open, deep, and great connection between our two countries for now and for the generation to come. Ahmed. Ahmed Lutfi. <laughs>